I'm dealing with a lot of issues of jealousy, competition, and envy. Can you help me understand the nature of these dynamics and how to work with them within myself? Now, this is a universal thing. Humans have a tendency to be jealous, competitive, envious, right? And I, I want to talk about the core, because I've seen this in a lot of people, and I want to talk about the, and it's come up a couple of times, I want to talk about the core of what is at the bottom of this. Because at the bottom of this issue of jealousy, competition and envy is a single belief system of scarcity. Right? Scarcity. You can't be jealous. If you're jealous of something, there's a jealousy that you're not going to be able to get it. And therefore, if somebody else is getting it, you're not going to have the opportunity if there's competition, you're competing because there's only some a, a limited amount of something and you're competing to get it. You're competing for work, you're competing for attention, you're competing for something. You're looking at it from a scarcity perception that there's not enough of it for you. So you have to compete for it. And if you envy it in someone else, you feel disempowered that you could create it in yourself. So all of that, the, the, the root of that that manifestation comes from this belief, unconscious belief, in a universe of scarcity. In an abundant universe, there's no need to be jealous because you can achieve and create the same amount as anyone else. In an abundant universe, there's no need for competition because you're not competing for a limited amount of something. Attention, time, space, money. There's an abundance of it. In an unlimited universe, you don't have to envy, envy somebody else's success because you feel un, unable or unwilling to do it yourself or able to do it yourself because then there's an abundant factor that of course if that person can do it I can be inspired to do it too. So it, there's this layer of all of these patterns that start from this idea of scarcity and this scarcity it's always this win-lose mentality right that if somebody else is winning you're losing and that is a scarcity based thought process now we know the universe is unconditional. We know that it provides everything and anything we need. The issue then becomes with this idea that somehow I'm ineffective or inefficient or unable or not capable of being able to achieve this to get or manifest said circumstance. Such and such and such can create relationships. I, I, something's wrong with me, I can't. There's, I'm, I'm, such and such can create, creates time and energy with an individual and gets all this attention. Something's wrong with me. I can't, I, I, why, why am I not getting that attention? Why is that person not giving it to me? Right? And therefore, then we compete with another individual for that perceived limited amount of attention because we feel like there's only going to be enough of it. There's not enough of it to go around and I got to get my piece. So I'm willing to compete, you know, in this vicious way with another individual or just in my own head. And then I'm envious of somebody else's success because I somehow believe that's not available for me. Now we're all guilty of this to a certain degree. So it all stems from the idea of scarcity. So when you can look at that perspective and understand that if you were to take away that conditioning and you were to really examine that conditioning of how you believe their scarcity, none of those other things would exist. Attention, infinite amounts of attention, infinite amounts of money, infinite amounts of love, infinite amount of opportunity for partners and, and relationships. Now it becomes more of a responsibility issue on you of what do I need to do to change, shift, renegotiate my existing relationship in order to create and see the world from an abundant perspective. So part of that starts with a mindset, of course. We have to continue to program ourselves, reprogram ourselves to think abundantly because we've been told that there's not enough, you know? Or we experienced it through our direct experience of our family conditioning. There was only a certain amount of love we viewed and our siblings got it and we didn't and therefore we have to compete and make sure we have attention for what we get. We got to crave and make sure we get that attention because there's only a certain amount of it, right? We've been conditioned to believe in a world of scarcity. 
but that can't be farther from the truth. In the inherent essence of who we are, we are fully abundant, unconditional, infinitely creative, totally potential, all potential, manifest and unmanifest consciousness within us. We are literally the walking expression on a, on a, on a soul level of abundance. So, our relative conditioning, our behaviors, our beliefs, have taught us to think of lesser, have taught us scarcity as a way of thinking. And if we approach the world from that scarcity-based perspective, contractive, we will create these conflicts of jealousy, competition, and envy as a result of that. So the energetic basis of it is scarcity. So how do you break that? Like, you know, first of all, you have to acknowledge when you, you have to be honest about the fact that you feel these things, right? With those of us who feel jealousy or competition, you have to get honest about the fact that you feel jealous because in that moment, you're not showing up for yourself. There's, there's a part of you that's outer referencing something in the outer world. And that outer world referencing has superseded your internal referencing and you feel lack it's because you're not in a referencing anymore for first and foremost you have to acknowledge that you feel it once you feel it you have to understand your outer referencing you're comparing you know and let's be clear comparison is deadly the whole idea of comparison is absolutely deadly it always is always will be because how can a being that's completely your unique configuration compare itself to another being that's completely different it's apples and oranges always now, that doesn't mean we don't get inspired by somebody's acts, but when we get inspired by somebody's acts, we get inspired by what somebody's achieved, and we say, hey, how can I find my version of that in the world? Right? We don't say, I can't do that, he can, he's got better opportunities than me, or he's got better skills, or it's just not available to me. That's a belief in scarcity. That's a belief in a, that you diminish your own worth in that process. So, first you have to be able to admit that you're feeling those contractive feelings. Then you have to go to the source of what is underneath of that. And what's underneath of that is somehow the wounded inner child part of you has felt unmet needs. So scarcity is the energy, but in a psychological perspective, it's unmet needs. Because if your needs were met and you felt and you got what you needed, you wouldn't have felt a lack, right? So this, 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 that the, there isn't enough was demonstrated in some way that your needs were not met. The outer source of giving you these needs were not met. And therefore, because the needs weren't met, you have all these coping mechanisms on how to handle and get these needs in a contractive way when you're unconscious. But what's a more effective way of dealing with this? A more effective way of dealing with this is just meeting your own needs, right? Instead of looking in the outside to have some source, you're comparing yourself to something someone's competing on the outside, or you're, you're, you're jealous about somebody else's in, in level of, of achievement or their consciousness. In, just look at what, how you can redefine and recreate your relationship and give those needs to yourself on the inside. And when you give those needs on the inside, you're starting to heal that part that did not receive what it needed as part of sustaining, and you are breaking the understanding and conditioning of scarcity. So you be your own source. So a lot of times I use the, the um, I like to um, create this in terms of archetypes because it's easier to understand. It's like, it's the wounded inner child part of you that learned that it was never going to get enough in some way, shape, or form. Its needs weren't going to be met. And so we develop, it develops these coping mechanisms of anger and frustration in an unconscious world, in an unconscious relationship of jealousy and competition and anger and envy, right? And focuses on the outside of all it's not getting. But then when you become conscious and aware enough and you say, if I can give and self-sustain these needs to myself that were never given, we're, that's a very powerful form of nurturing. Right? So you no longer feel the need 
to look at the world from scarcity because on the inside you're creating a feedback loop of self-sustaining energy of expansive abundance and when you have that on the inside and feel the experience of what it feels like that counteracts that conditioning of scarcity of unmet needs and you become and reparent yourself in the way you've always wanted to be parented you become the relationship for yourself that you've always wanted to have in the outside world you become the best friend to yourself that you've always wanted to have in the outside world when you do that you feel the energy of abundance in a different way and therefore that shatters the belief system of scarcity so in effect you're the you're the cause and the cure right you were the cause because as long as you focus on the outside world to sustain you you're never going to be satisfied and when you're the cure that you've always had the ability to self-sustain but you didn't either believe or know or understand that you had that capacity so the invitation is that if you're if you go inside and shift the relationship to abundance on the inside that you will no longer feel envious jealous or competitive on the outside because you're meeting the needs that you didn't have meet met the con you're 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 redefining and renegotiating the conditioning i notice that people who are jealous who are very jealous of, of circumstances is because a they don't feel they can give it to themselves they never they've never taken the opportunity to or they believe that they don't deserve it or somehow they believe it's worthiness issue they don't think that they can do it other people can get it but they can't something's wrong with them all of its contractive but if you look at all the basis of that it's all about giving it to, if you give it to yourself and you generate that on the inside you're gonna radiate a different in, in invitation on the outside and you'll create something entirely different and you will be inspired by somebody else's growth not um, threatened by it you'll be inspired by somebody else's achievements not threatened by it maybe you'll be inspired to find new ways to reestablish your own inner relationship which will change and even more deeply expand you the invitations on the outside world are meant for inspiration they're not meant as a comparison to, to knock yourself down they're meant as an opportunity to uplift yourself by saying what's my version my unique version of that how do I find that for me and it doesn't have to be the same as everybody else's as long as I'm in alignment with it and it feels good and it's expansive and it's fulfilling and I feel alive and, and emblazoned with this this energy of expansion in me you'll feel the difference you know, people who are in when they're cruising, when people are in really successful spaces and they're in an authentic relationship with their success, they don't get jealous of other people. They're inspired and excited by it. When you see somebody else's achievement, you're like, "Wow, that's incredible!" And what do you want to do? You want to share in the expansion, right? But that requires you to think abundantly. It requires you to think beyond scarcity. So. When we start breaking the internal scarcity, we start meeting our own needs. We start showing up for ourselves in the way we've always wanted to show up. We start being what we've always wanted to be on the outside world. We start being it for ourselves on the inside world. And there's varying ways and techniques and tools to do that in a psychological way, in a spiritual way, in an energetic way, in all these different ways. Then what you're doing is you're, you're building an internal vortex of complete abundance. And when that abundance, that internal vortex, starts radiating out to the universe, in integrity, the universe sends back invitations of more abundance. Like creates like. So, part of it deals is dealing with the needy child. Let's be clear, none of us had all our needs met. You know? Very few of us even really entered into relationships of consciousness until we were much older. Like, many of us didn't even get in the presence of very conscious beings until we were in our 20s or 30s or even later. So we didn't understand the nature of that because we were wired into the conditioning we were in. So then when you enter into this new state where you're now conscious, well, there is a responsibility, the ability to respond to yourself and meet those needs that were never met. And when you do that, you become your own great central sun. 
There's no need to compare to the outside world. You can get inspired. You can renegotiate that inner relationship, but you don't need to have fear because there's lack. And so those dynamics start from that renegotiation between the idea of abundance internally and, and scarcity internally. I promise you, and this is how it happened for me, you know, I, when I started to realize I was the cause and the cure, that I could, I could be all the things I wanted, and as soon as I created on the inside, the universe demonstrated that creation and gave me opportunities to explore it with other partners on the outside. And that was, for me, one of those aha moments where it was like, this is an inside job. It always has been. It always will be. It starts here. It starts with me giving to me. And that's not selfish. And that's not self-absorbed because there's more expansive energy now that I'm radiating available to everybody as a result of that. And I don't have to look at the world from a scarcity, scarcity perspective, right? So this is unconscious in a lot of cases. It's not necessarily a conscious thought process. It's a belief system that's wired into our unconscious um, psychology. So uh, listen, I'm still unraveling those layers on all different places. There, I mean, the process continues. The refinement continues. You keep, once you become empowered with expansiveness and you reach a certain level of surplus in certain areas of your consciousness, then you look at the areas that are lacking and you go into those areas and you work with them. So it is possible for somebody to be highly expansive and abundant in one area of their consciousness and be in scarcity in another area of their consciousness. Like there are people who are highly um, skilled at making finances and becoming financially secure, but they have difficulty with relationships, right? They don't view the emotional, they have emotional scarcity, but they have, they understand and they see the relationship with money and they say, oh no, I'm abundant with finances. <coughs> Excuse me. Or they're highly abundant in relationships and they haven't transferred the same thought process of, of complete expansiveness and abundance into their finances, right? So you have to look in your own consciousness and find the gap for you. Where is the gap? And that's where the work is. That's where the, the spiritual relationship needs to change. So a lot of people think, well, if I'm rich and abundant and I've created this wealth on the outside, of course it transfers to the other, side, the other parts of my consciousness. No, it does not necessarily mean that. There's always gaps. Listen, I've met many spiritual beings who are enlightened beings, gurus and masters who have gaps in their consciousness. So abundance, you want to be able to look at abundance from a, a, a spiritual perspective, from an energetic perspective, from an emotional perspective, from a, um, from, a, from a mental perspective, from a physical perspective, and an outer world perspective. So meaning, when abundance is fully realized on all the different layers of your consciousness, or a lot of the different layers, you start to manifest in the outside world. So your job is to find the places where there is a feeling of lack, and go in there and feed and give to yourself what you need in order to break the conditioning around scarcity. So yes, it is possible that you could be highly highly abundant in one area and not abundant in another area. It is highly possible that you could be very scarcity based in this area but not in, there, in this area and that's conditioning that comes from the conditioning of your childhood. Unconscious conditioning of where and what you see. So some areas we break through younger but we still have other areas that we need to address. That's part of the journey. Right? So the, the key thing here is for every single person there's one area where you're abundant. So your job is to go into the area that you're abundant and look at how you relate to that facet, right? So say you're really abundant with money. How do you relate to money? How do you see it? How do you view it? And then take the, the, the patterns that are expansive and then transfer the patterns to the place where it's not expansive and apply the same process to the gaps. One of the biggest learnings for me, 
over the last three or four years was about money, right? I came from a, 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 a particular background. I spent 11 years in self-sacrifice in an, in an ashram where I gave up my finances, my vocation, my choice to serve a higher purpose, to serve this purpose. And there was a lot of sacrifice in that process. I'm not saying it was all bad, but it was very polarized for me at some point. And my relationship, I had never examined my relationship to finances like I had examined my relationship to my emotional body, my me mental body, my energetic body, my spiritual body. I had a gap. So, one of the first things I did when I came out of that ashram was to say, it is, if I really and truly understand the dynamics of this feeling of abundance in all of these spiritually abundant areas, I should be able to take those patterns and transfer those patterns into this area that there's a gap and be effective. And I was. Now, it took me time to unravel it. Because I had such conditioned belief systems, because I've never, I had not done the exploration in that particular facet of my consciousness the way I had done it in other facets. So I had to take time and work it. And sometimes I got frustrated because it, I had it in so many other areas, but this area I didn't have it. And I'm like, but it should be easy because I know how to do it in all these other areas. Easy, simple, yes. Easy, not necessarily the case. I still had to go through a process of unraveling. I had to re-examine the relationship. But I had all the skills available to me because I knew how to do it in all the other areas, or at least multiple areas. So all I had to do was take the same thing and apply it. Right? And when I did that, changed the game. Changed the game. And then my outer world was now a depiction of a layer of abundance that I had never experienced ever before because I applied the tools from that from those other places. So I'm saying for any individual you have the skills and tools there you know transfer them from the places where you are successful. The expansive behavior patterns and habits you have there you can transfer into the areas where you don't because you know the skills. And if you don't know the skills, you work with someone who does have the skills who can give you the skills so you can identify what the skills are so that you can apply them there. You use the people in the outside world's inspiration. So it was a powerful thing for me because I believe that if I truly had manifested this understanding of abundance that I should be able to create it in the outside world. It took time to unravel, but when I did, I applied the exact same spiritual tools that I was using in the other parts of my consciousness, things changed. And I started to see the manifestation of that, and then the momentum of it became far less effort-based, and there was surplus. And now, once the distortions have been refined, the rest of my journey is about refining the refinements. How much more expansive? How much more abundant? How much more love? How much more nurturing can I become for myself and in all of these different areas of consciousness? That's just part of the game. That's part of, the, part of it. But don't become frustrated because you have a gap. Inherently, all of us have a gap somewhere. There's conditioning. We all have a corrupted psychology. The, the, the deal is finding out what, where the gap is in you and doing the nurturing quality of work that's required for you to reestablish a different relationship. Source that part of you that needs it in that area. Very powerful. So for me, I was jealous and competitive and very envious when I'd look out in the world in specific areas. So I knew that's where my work was. And it was a very beautiful invitation for me to re-examine the gap of the unexamined part of me. Very powerful for me. And so as a result of that, that opened me up to to a whole different way of thinking and I could apply it in a, in a physical world. So everybody has it in some way, shape or form. Your job is to just work with that area, get help, nurture that area, love and appreciate that area. You know, for some people it's, it's different for everyone. Some people it's energetic, some people it's mental, some people it's emotional, some people it's in a relationship, some people it's in finances, some people it's in creating friendships. It, it's you know, just because you have it all in one area doesn't mean 
that there isn't work to do in another area. But you have the skills and tools. You just have to keep practicing. And, you know, every area has its own kind of specific way of dealing with it. So there are specific tools in those areas. And that's what, you know, part of my journey was that, was to be able to move out of that area, the move from the, with that spiritual understanding and to be able to apply that in the physical world. And I said, in theory, if these tools work, I should be able to do that. And as I continue to um, continue that process, that's part of my refinement. I mean, there's other areas too, don't get me wrong. You're always going to be refining all those different areas. But it's a difference between seeing a scarcity from seeing abundance. And that's the baseline of those ideas of jealousy, competition, and envy.